Let me begin by sharing two very disturbing experiences with you I had 30 years ago. In the early 80s, I was writing my doctoral dissertation in Frankfurt am Main at the Johann Wolfgang Goethe University, and I was writing it on the recent debate of the mind-body problem after World War II. Philosophers had developed about nine different theories, solutions to the mind-body problem. I had grown up in a more traditionally oriented philosophy department home of the famous Frankfurt School of Political Philosophy, which maybe some of you know. And as I penetrated deeper into the literature, I realized to my great surprise that nobody believed in the existence of a soul or anything like that anymore and that as closer you got to the real substantial philosophical work on the research frontier, materialism was the orthodoxy. And it was actually something like a competition for the most ruthless and hard-headed form of reductive materialism. This came as a great surprise to me, but it was excellent work. A lot of it came out of American universities. I wasn't prepared for this, uh, that the question was just what form of materialism is the right form of materialism, and that none of the experts believed that something like consciousness could exist independently of the biological brain. Then a second disturbing experience happened in my life. I returned from a very long, 10-week, very intensive meditation retreat, and afterwards, I had a series of OBEs, of out-of-body experiences. I never asked for them, I was not seeking this, but I vividly and in a crystal clear way, a number of times had the experience of leaving my own body, seeing it from the outside. Now what to do? Maybe you can imagine the conflict I was in, I didn't dare tell anybody about it. And I think one of the first things that is really interesting about being human is that rarely, but we are capable of being intellectually honest. And that is one of the things I'm interested in. Can you be intellectually honest and still take your own first-person experience, including the element of certainty going along with it, seriously? So let us look where this journey has taken me. Um, I will show you today that there is no such thing as a self. The self is not a thing but a process, a very special kind of process. And um, as it will turn out, nobody in this room ever had or was a self. I have brought three examples for you. I will introduce you into two philosophical concepts. And that's just one single point uh, at the end of this lecture. What I want to understand is how would a system, any system that is conscious and doesn't have a self, develop the robust experience of being someone? 